welcoming Roy to the stage. So Roy, thank you so much for being on set with us today and for sharing because in the month of February, you know, that's a month when people are talking about wanting to be in love or wanting to improve their love right. or, or strengthen their relationships. So whether it's a relationship with someone on an intimate level or a relationship with someone on a personal level, I think that you can gain knowledge from this, this valuable um, worth of, of information and experience that he has. So tell everybody, Roy, a little bit about who you are and what you do uh, in your business. Well, I am a relationship coach which is a little bit of an odd title, but I work with people who want to improve their love lives, who uh, either are single and are not having the partner that they would love in their life, or they're experiencing some sort of recurring pattern uh, where it starts and fizzles out, or it, there's a, some sort of pattern of, of um, where it breaks up after a few months, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So people that are single that want a, a better love life and people that are in a relationship that want to improve their communication, their intimacy, conflict resolution, communication problems. So all anytime there's a problem with someone's interpersonal and intimate relationship life, that's what I do. Okay, I love it. I love it. And you work with all sorts of different types of people. It's yes. not just it's not just one. So it could be married couples. It could be someone looking for love. Right. A, a, someone that's been divorced or widowed. Right. You know, right. You work with a lot of different types of people all right. across America. So it's not only just here right. in Central Florida either. Well, and Skype and that kind of thing. That's I I've talked just recently. Australia yesterday and uh, England the day before. So there are people all over that are looking for you know, a way to have a more conscious, fulfilling love life. And you're right, I mean, I, I deal with people, men or women, I, I deal frankly whether you're gay or straight, it doesn't matter, um, but people that want a better love life, single, married, divorced, divorce recovery, a lot of people who are in their late 30s, 40s that are having to get back in the dating world are terrified of that. Uh, they don't really know, like, I don't I haven't done this in 20 years. So a lot of people looking for just a, a little bit of self-confidence and and comfortability and those kind of things. So, yeah. I think that's important, and I personally know offhand, I've, I know of two people that have gone through your program, and it, what's appealing to me is the demographics were so different. Yeah. You know, one was somebody that was a little bit younger that was habitually in bad relationships, one right after another, and not able right. to find stability in her life, and then another person that I know of um, had recently lost their husband, and both of them raved about the experience that they had with you, which is why right. you were back on the show, because you've been here as a guest before. Right. Um, so what I'd like to do, as we we look at February, no matter who you are that's out there, as we look at February, I'd like to just have Roy share with you, share with us some steps. Like, are there any steps that you would encourage or tips that you can give us on how to um, create more intimate relationships? Right. And the reason why people can work with me or be in a workshop and be in such different places and get something out of it is because there are some basic core things that you can do in your love life that doesn't matter whether you're 25 and looking for a relationship or 55 and recovering from a lost relationship or a divorce or being a widow. So I guess what I would share today are what I call four pillars of intimacy. Um, and actually, they're, you can be called them almost like four pillars of integrity. Um, and, and I should start by setting it up a little bit because the, the most valuable thing that, that you have in your life that I have in my life is our, our sense of aliveness. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what we can totally control, and without it, we can lose motivation for our businesses. Without that sense of aliveness, uh, it affects our parenting, uh, it affects our love lives. And so these four pillars are things that if we are committed to them in our lives, uh, they give us a sense of wholeness, a sense of completeness, a sense of aliveness. It's kind of like if you, if you imagine yourself as a hose, if you kink the hose, nothing flows. Mm -hmm. And so these things are things that open up your flow in your life to where you can connect with your partner in a deep way or you can connect with your customers in a deep way or your children or your friends, mm -hmm. okay? So there are four pillars of, I call them intimacy because that's what I do. Um, and they are emotional intelligence, uh, healthy responsibility, impeccable agreements, or conscious communication. Okay, so we can just kind of talk about each one of those. I was going to say, please do, because right. these are all fancy words, but I don't right. know how the heck to do anything about right. any of those things, right. so break so, them down for us. Well, the, 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 one of the best ways, I, I have a cheat sheet, by the way. <laughs> um, one of the best ways to describe them is with emotional intelligence, there are things that we are not feeling. So there are, there are things that are unfelt. And in responsibility, there are things that are not owned. We're not owning responsibility. With agreements, it's things that are not being kept. And then with conscious communication of things not being said. 
So when we are not feeling our feelings, when we are not taking responsibility, not keeping our agreements, and we're not saying things that need to be said, then our, our hose gets all kinked up. Okay? So with emotional intelligence, now I'm speaking to probably the vast majority of women. Right. right? And women are extremely, the feminine I should say, very emotional creatures. But that doesn't mean that we're very good at knowing what we feel and expressing our feelings fully to completion. Um, so one of the skills in life and in intimacy is the ability to know what it is that you're feeling and to express it and move that energy through your body to completion. So one of the things people don't recognize is their body is like a big source of wisdom on emotional intelligence. So we get up in our heads sometimes and we always think about things, you know, we're trying to figure out why we might feel these things and we don't really know. But there are five primary feelings. There's a, a, a zillion kinds of feelings, but they all come in like five kinds. Okay. There's anger, scared, sad, joyful, and sexual feelings, okay? Now anger could be anything, I'm irritated, I'm annoyed, but it's still in the anger category. So what people don't sometimes recognize is their body knows what they feel often before you understand what you feel. So it's helpful sometimes to think about, if you want to know what you feel, to know what parts of your body you're, are, you're experiencing. So what they found is that when you're angry, you often feel it in your neck, in your shoulders, mm, imagine that, in, Jeff. <laughs> in your, in your temples, in your jaw, and in your hands, okay. right? Because people say, you know, you're such a pain in the neck, right? So you might find that if you're in a relationship or something's going on and you're feeling a lot of stuff up in here, then you might say, you know what, maybe I'm angry. Maybe I could just stop and say, you know, what am I not willing to feel in this? Because remember, most women were raised in a household where it was not okay to be angry, mm -hmm. right? Big boys don't cry and little girls can't be mad. Mm -hmm. Be sweet and be nice and wear your pretty little bows and put a smile on your face. But women are not allowed to be raging and sometimes women feel a lot of anger. So you'll store that in that part of your body. Now, sadness is all in your chest, in your throat and behind your eyes. You can say, I'm all choked up or I've got a broken heart. So a lot of times you might be in a relationship or in a conversation where you feel a lot of tension in your chest or, or pressure there. And that might give you a clue. Maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm actually really sad right now. I'm grieving something right now. Mm -hmm. Now, fear is in the belly area, in the solar plexus. You know, like I, you know, if you, I played a lot of sports in my life, so you can get uh, butterflies in your stomach, mm -hmm. okay? So that's an area when you feel knots or tension in your stomach, that it's a clue that you might be scared of something. Joy is a feeling that seems to be a rising energy through your whole body, like a tingling, like you want to explode, like you want to, you want to, you know, that kind of thing. And sexual feelings, feelings are around your genitals and your hips and that part of your area. Most of us are familiar with those. So, um, yeah. Can we Sorry. cut away from that? No. no. Um, <laughs> it's live, so, Roy. It's right. live. Just so, run with it. <laughs> right. So, so the important thing in a relationship is to know what you're feeling and to be able to, to speak it to your partner in what I call the unarguable or the inarguable truth. See, a lot of drama happens and arguments happen because we say things people can argue about. Right. So if I was to say something like, um, you know, it, it, uh, this, this, this setup in here, this is the greatest studio uh, you know, in the world. Well, somebody could argue with that. Mm -hmm. But if I said that I really, I really think the studio is wonderful, now you can't argue. Right. So inarguable things are thoughts you're having, sensations in your body, or feelings. So we get into arguments sometimes. We start blaming or criticizing mm -hmm. or making these always and never statements instead of just saying, boy, when you came home later than you said you would, I felt, I felt you know, a lot of tension in my neck and shoulders. And my story is I'm really feeling, feeling angry. Now, your spouse can't say, no, you're not, right? But if you said, you're always late and you're, you're, you don't care about me and you don't love me, well, he can argue with that, right. right? So this is one of the skills that I work with in emotional intelligence is teaching people to speak what's not arguable, to stay in your experience of what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you're sensing, or what you're wanting. And when you do that, a person can't argue with you, and then you, you're able to toss back and forth mm -hmm. Um, when they share what, what's happening for them, what they're thinking, what they're wanting, what they're feeling. And that way you're not getting into all these arguable things and creating a bunch of drama, okay? Now one little more skill there is one of my mentors, in fact, Dr. Gay Hendricks is the one that he came up with these things, um, is speaking what's called in one out breath, okay. right? 
So most every important conversation you could ever have, you can say in just one breath. But a lot of us get into these things where we talk forever, forever and ever. So the conversation just needs to be said, you know, honey, I'm having an affair and I want a divorce. Or something you're feeling in terms, you know, I'm really sad about the way I saw you interact with that person. Mm -hmm. So the next time you feel you're in some sort of an intimate relationship situation and you're having a conflict or you want to share emotional, think about can I, can I say what's on my mind in just one breath and just pare it right down. Why do you think that that's important though? Like, is, is it because you're removing all the emotional feelings from it and you're just getting to the, the true feeling? Well, it's not that you're removing emotions from it because emotions is what we're trying to be able to be honest about. What it is is you get out of the stories and all the reasoning and all the trying to explain why you might feel a certain way or uh, why this person's doing it. So you get out of your head and you're just, you're just right down to what needs to be said right now. This, you're not doing a very good job and I have to let you go. And it's just like, boom, that's, that's what needs to be said. And it's, it's not to say that another part of the conversation might take place, but what I find is when I, when I start talking a lot, like now, but <laughs> when you're in a situation, you can start defending yourself, justifying, rationalizing, over explaining, instead of really landing in your body and saying, this is what's true for me. This is what I'm really feeling right now. And it comes out real clean and real crisp, and a person can really understand it and really hear it. So, okay, so I heard that you are feeling this or you're wanting that. Okay? I think that's wonderful. And, you know, that is such an important step in, in creating that intimacy because, you know, it's not always easy for men and women to communicate. Right. And I think that, like you said, if you go around these circles where you're, you're sharing so many different stories, they stop listening. So by the time you get to that one statement that could be the most important thing to say, they've tuned out or shut down or went back into their, their right. cave because they, right. they needed to create that separation right. of communication. And let's just take that listening thing and dovetail into this next one. Okay, absolutely. Which will go to conscious communication, which are things that are not said. Um, and part of that in conscious communication is, is the ability to really listen to someone and not just listen to what they're saying, but to listen for the desire in their words. Because a lot of times we're saying something and we're communicating to someone about something and we're either forming our own thoughts in our heads about what we're gonna say in response to how mm -hmm. we're gonna defend ourselves or tell them that they're wrong or just share our opinion. Um, so we're either doing that or we're listening to what they're saying but we're missing kind of what's behind their words. Um, so I, I could be talking to a client and they could be telling me something about that happened with someone they're on a date with or their husband did something with them. And they're going through the words and I'm getting the words but I'm if I'm really there and listening, I'm able to say, what I'm hearing from you is I think you're really scared right now. And they're like, yeah, it's exact, you know, it's almost it helps them kind of land on it. Mm -hmm. Because I, I'm hearing what they're saying, but they're really, they're really afraid. Or, they're, or I think you're really maybe angry about this. And, and it, so a person feels felt. They, feel, they felt like you connected with them when you're listening for not just the words, but for the desire and the, and the, and the energy and the emotion behind it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, so this commu conscious communication thing is all about what needs to be said that's not being said, okay? So, so in relationships, um, it's all about revealing versus concealing. Okay. Okay, so there's a lot, of, a lot of people wrestle with this, but I'm of the kind of belief that in a relationship that there should be no secrets, that you should be able to reveal what you're thinking, what you're feeling. And so one of the rules is, if, if you've thought something or had something happen three times, then it's time for me to tell you. So I, you know, so I was talking to a friend. It was so amazing lat the other night. He has a brand new baby, and it's seven months. And at that stage, it, it, that's a, a very dangerous stage for a couple. Right. When, when the, because as a man, a lot of times, I don't know if you know this, but there's a huge percentage of men have affairs in the first year of their first baby's life. Oh, I had no idea. Right, like 70%. That's something, I don't know how they get these numbers, but they, that's a huge number. The reason is, is the man no longer is the center of attention. And, and, and then he begins to look. So my friend actually told his wife, because their baby's seven months old, he said, I find myself hoping some women will, some woman will hit on me, would flirt with me. Because I just feel like I'm, I've disappeared from the family. And I was like, that was the greatest thing I've ever heard. He actually told her. 
And it didn't create drama. I mean, she understood that. Mm -hmm. And it, it created intimacy because now she knows, and it, it, she may not be able to change much because the baby dominates some time, but now he knows that she knows. And she knows that, and, and so they're together on that. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that can really kick your hose is when you're not saying things to a, a boss, to a child, to a partner. So um, that's one of the challenges. I think that's important. And you know, I find myself often even parenting that when I, you know, just because I said so, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like how do you um, allow your children an opportunity to say things when you want to have the last word and you want them to shut up. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, how do you make sure Sometimes. that you allow them to communicate and get their feelings across, but when you're parenting? Yeah, and sometimes you do want them to shut up. Right. And sometimes you're busy and you uh, parents have to learn how to set boundaries and there's times for this. So there's chances to say, kids, I can't do that now. This is not the time for that conversation. We'll do that later. Um, but one of the things that in the area of emotional intelligence is not only are you feeling what you feel, mm -hmm. but do you allow the people around you to feel completely what they feel and express it to their completion? So that's something for children because mm -hmm. sometimes we don't really want to hear our child's complete authenticity. Sometimes we suppress them. Um, we don't want them to share if they're angry with us or we don't, we don't have time to hear them being scared of something. And so we cut them off. And what happens is those little kids grow up to be adults like us who aren't able to actually say, I'm scared of something or I'm really angry about something. Um, you know, it's very common for women that I deal with that when they're, when they're really angry, they cry. Because they, they, there's something that doesn't allow them to just be right. with their rage. So it turns into tears. Just like with men. Some, some men actually, when they're angry, they're actually really scared or really sad, but they've never been taught they can go there. Well, all they know is, oh man, but really underneath that. So there's layers. Right. So with your children, one of the greatest gifts you can give is set boundaries on what's permissible and what's not, but you want to invite them, tell me how you feel. So you made a decision. So you can't go, you got a, a bad grade, so you're not going to go to that party. But I want to hear how you feel about that. Tell me. I mean, you're not going to the party, <laughs> but I want you to tell me how you feel. Tell me what's going on. Express it fully with me. I can handle that. And, you know, there's been a lot of times where I've made decisions. I have an 18 year old son. So there's, I got some reins that I have to, you know, keep him somehow in the, in the corral. Right, absolutely. Um, and he doesn't like it, but I want, you know, tell me. Tell me if you're angry with me. Tell me if you're uh, really frustrated or if you think something's not fair. I want, I want you to be able to share what's on your mind. Because if we withhold, we withdraw. Right. And so, you especially don't want an 18-year-old or a teenager withdrawing from right. you because that's the most right. important time to communicate. Right. So whether you've got to um, rein in your husband or rein in your employee or um, you know rein in your child, it's important to remember that you set those boundaries and you communicate as well. Right. Now, do you have um, anything else, another tip that you wanted to share with us as we start to wrap up this segment today? I know. Well, I can just say the, the one here, the impeccable agreements. Mm -hmm. um, so it's unfelt, unowned, unkept, or unsaid. The impeccable agreements. I mean... There's a lot of complicated advice out there for relationships, but if people actually did what they say they were going to do, when they said they would do it, oh, there'd be so much peace. So um, what have you agreed to do that you're not doing? What, have, what agreements have you not kept? And taking it one step further, what have you agreed to do that you shouldn't have agreed to do? Right. We do. We sometimes want to be nice and we overcommit. And then we don't really have any joy in our lives from doing it because we didn't want to do it in the first place. Absolutely. So really reviewing all those things. So, and by the way, if anybody wants this, I can email this to you. So. Well, tell them, why don't you tell them how they can get in touch with you? What is your website and how do they find you? I know you're right. on the WOMTech group page and yeah. you're in WOMTech directory, but how do they find you? Coachingwithroy.com is my website and it's Roy at coachingwithroy.com. And I'll, I'll send them this document. Um, Anybody who wants a 30-minute free coaching session to talk about what's happening in their life, maybe one of these things that they're facing, uh, I'll do that with any WOMTech person. You know, 30 minutes, no charge, we'll just talk. I so, think that's awesome. Yeah. I think that's fabulous. You know, with WOMTech, it truly is all about relationship building and, you know, getting past the superficial networking to the authentic connections. And that's what I love about everything that you've said because it really is um, about how do you – 
I don't want to say fix yourself, but be real with yourself, with the way right. you communicate, with how you relate, with how people connect with you, with how you allow them to connect to you. Um, I think all of those things are so true. And until you can um, deal with those internal struggles, it's going to be hard for you to have a cohesive relationship in any way, shape or form, whether it's networking or doing business or with your children or with your husband. So thank you so much for sharing.